Okay, so basically now I'm going to just show you really quickly the features um, and I'll try to focus a little bit more on Thimble because that's my emphasis today. So um, you saw the idea that they suggested there. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit here. See if I can get that. No, I don't want to zoom in. All right. Um, so you get the idea that um, one of the suggestions they had is, hey, you could change anything you want in here, you know, um, with... Now you can modify web pages using the X-Ray goggles. So that's what I'm going to do first is show you how to use X-Ray goggles. So I have it. It's it's basically X-Ray goggles is something that you will drop onto your toolbar. And then whenever you visit a website, you can just um, activate the X-Ray goggles on that website. So here we, I'm visiting the real, this is the real page at the New York Times.com as of today, Wednesday, August 27th. And what you see me doing is I'll activate the x-ray goggles. That's usually a button that you have somewhere here. I have it inside of a folder called tools. Now what you see happening because it's activated is you see this menu that came up over here. And it tells me the web x-ray goggles are activated. Plus press escape to deactivate. So I can quit or by pressing here or um, selecting escape. I can also undo or redo changes seek help and publish. So that's what these menu options are for. But basically what we can do is this this right here is an image you saw when I clicked well let me go back in here when I go over any parts of the page in here the pages are just simply elements okay that are written in HTML code that are um, you know that are written and you can see that they're there they have these brackets these are called opening and closing brackets okay and and the bracket types tell it, you know, like this is a header, a header to type, okay, of a bracket. Well, anyway, brackets are, um, each each element is really what we're looking at here. So let's say I want to change, um, you know, this headline here. So what I can do is I just highlight the element that I'm going to want to modify and click. And once I've clicked, then it's going to bring up what what the source code is for that. So you can see over here, this is what it looks like. And there is actually a couple different things that are going on in here, two different classes of elements here. So I'm going to just change to readers respond to the beauty of Dan Tamander's writing. Okay. And, um, you know, if I want to, now this is, this is fun kind of for kids to do. You can get them engaged in kind of, you know, screwing around with uh, with websites and making their own headlines like this or whatever. Um, but then the idea is then, you know, it, it, that's only fun for so long. So then after you explore it a little bit, just how to change and, and, and make changes here, you can go in here to the advanced and you can see what the code looks like if you were, you know, really reading through it. And you can see it's right there, you know. That's... That's what the code is. That's where I changed it. Here's the preview. I'm going to go ahead and save changes. And once I've saved the changes, I have a new headline there, which I think is really cool. Now, it hasn't been changed at NewYorkTimes.com. It's only been changed here in my cached copy of the page. What that means is that I, in the local cache, in the local memory of the computer, it now has read that this is the new code for this page. As soon as I hit refresh, it's going to be gone. So I hit refresh. And it goes goes back out to the server at NewYorkTimes.com, and it brings back the correct information. Okay, and notice that it also took off my tool, my tool here. Now, I, what I do is after I've made changes to anything that I want, changing colors, changing words, changing any element that I want on a page, I can publish. That was one of the tools here on X-Ray goggles. So that is the first uh, set of features I'm going to show you that go with um, X-Ray goggles. Now let's take a look at um, Popcorn. Okay, Popcorn Maker was another one. And I'm just going to show you just briefly here how you would use that. So I click on Make from Scratch with um, Popcorn Maker. And what it does is it just gives me um, an, an, a video editor, actually a media editor. And what I do is I start by adding in media and then I add events. Okay. And really the video, the video, the media can be anything. So what I did was I just said, oh, my wife likes Imagine Dragons a lot. Actually, the whole family does. So I'm going to just take some Imagine Dragons videos and paste them into there. Okay. And that will, and I'll say, go get that media and it'll get it for me. 
And then I'm going to go in here. I'll get another one. Here's another uh, official video of a different Imagine Dragons um, uh, video. And I go back into my... Um, I'm pasting that link in here and saying go get that. And I can just keep doing this. I can go in and get like, you know, maybe I'll just get one more here. Let's try, uh, I'm on top of the world. Okay, yeah, that's good right there. So we'll open that one up. I will grab, notice what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the URL, okay, the address up there. Then I'm going into my popcorn machine. I'm clicking and I'm pasting it, okay, and I can get that media, all right? And so basically, that's what I'm doing. Now, the media doesn't have to be videos. It can be anything that you want. It can be pictures. Um, you see in here that you can, you can, um, you have tools that you know suggest you can bring in uh, Vimeo, YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, different different types of um, media that's out there, and you can import it. Okay, and it goes over here, and then what you do is you just pr press the plus button, and it puts it in there for you, and as you add, you see that you get different layers of it here. So kind of what's cool is to take the video, it's the next step here, and try trimming it. So that is really just, you know, simple. I just I just scroll to the left here. Let's uh, go back there. We want to go back a little bit earlier. And over here is the zoom feature so that I can see more or less of my video at a time. And that's what I'm going to do. So this will be a little like mix that I'm going to make. Drop the beginning part of this video because I only really want oh about 30 seconds. In fact, another way to do this really simply is over here. Now that I have that track I uh, selected, you see that I can put in here and say, "Give me oh, come in at 30 seconds, um, so zero colon 30, and go out at." 1 colon 30 and that will give me that one minute of track in there and then what I can do is bring this uh, let's see I'm gonna highlight this track and I only want to get a, a little bit of video in here so how about if I go from I don't know two minutes to out at two minutes and 15 seconds so that gives me 15 seconds of that clip and then all I can I have to do is just slide it over and line it up so that it goes together and then over here, I'm going to just do one last one, and I'll go for 20 seconds here. Oops, 0 colon 20, start at 20 seconds in, and go to 0 colon, you know, let's see, 45. So there's 25 seconds of video there. I can lay that on it, and it will, I can add in some extra layers that I might want here, and maybe I'll slide these up a little bit. I'll she show you why that might be useful or worthwhile in a minute here. Okay, I've kind of adjusted these, so. But what I can do now is I will add in to these layers some events. Okay, so I can add in pictures. I can make it loop. Um, I'm gonna add in text here. And when I do, you see that I have the ability to edit this text right here. Let me drop that right there. And uh, bring the preview pane where I can see it. And then I can double click in there and just say, this band is amazing. Okay, whatever. Okay, I can change the size of it. I can change the location of it. You see me doing this quickly. Uh, I'm not getting it changed now. So let's slide this over there where it's definitely in there. Let's highlight it. There we go. And bring it down. Now maybe I'll put it down here. Okay. So let's uh, do some final. You see how easy this is to adjust. We just gonna make a really quick little video and and drag it down and I think I'll just have those three tracks so it'll just kind of flip like that notice when I import those videos by the way I, I have the option of not bringing the sound with it but personally I mean that's kinda if you look when I click on the video itself I can just say just give me the video no audio or vice versa and I can modify the volume so those are kind of kind of neat little tools, and then of course I can preview what it's going to look like. So I've got the preview. You can see now my text is going to come up. I don't know if we'll see it because it's in that black area down there. In fact, we don't. So let's just adjust that a little bit. Yeah, see, we're not seeing it because it's there, but let's let's drag that. Oops. 
let's drag that up where we can see it in the area up here. All right, and let's go back and press play. So now watch how it'll just change. And then obviously, oh, and you can use transitions and um, set your text alignment, all that kind of stuff. Okay, my computer is moving too slow for me to want to do this right now, and that's because I'm trying to record, I think, at the same time. So I'm just going to, oh, here's my save button right here. So I would save this as a popcorn video, and your kids will, your kids will love this. Trust me, um, it's a lot of fun, and you can create some pretty cool stuff. Like if you're teaching a character theme, okay, on, let's say, being responsible, and they wanted to find some music, some pictures that showed responsibility. And maybe they had a song that really talked about being responsible and they wanted to um, put it to some, some pictures. They could make their own videos and present them. And um, you would have a high level of engagement in that activity as you get people talking about something important. Okay, lastly we have Thimble here. And the features that I'm just going to point out quickly and we'll be done with this video um, is simply that you have a editor on the left side of Thimble and you have a preview pane on the left on the right side of Thimble so I want you to check this out when you go in we're back to webmaker.org right when I go into um, the tools and I go to here if I started from scratch what I'd have is blanks there's nothing really over here mm, there's a basic line and then I would have to write all my own code or I could go and copy it off of a web page and paste it in there. Um, but they actually have you know some generic stuff that people have made, and you can remix. And that's the that's the neat thing is getting you to build some cool stuff that are remixes and then saving them. So uh, this one I'm sharing with you for in particular because I found this one that was created by somebody, and they shared it. And when they shared it, I said this looks really nice. I like the format of it. It wasn't perfect, but it was. It was kind of similar to what I would want to use for my lesson plans, right? And really, my lesson plans I'm doing as learning plans. And that's what I did. Um, I went through and took, let me just get some of these here, for example. Here we go. I created, using Webmaker Thimble, I took that this page here, made the changes that I wanted to it, and was able to publish it as a web page for the kids to follow. So this is what they're trying. This is their objective, and this is uh, you know how they're doing it. And um, you know I didn't really know a whole lot of HTML when I was doing it, but I knew that um, I I knew that if I edited here, so this is the feature. I edited here. I could see the preview of what I was changing over there, and that was extremely extremely powerful okay extremely powerful and of course that's how I really learned a lot more about HTML I know a little bit but I didn't know very much about HTML now certainly not as much as I've learned okay uh, just about the last thing I want to show you here is um, how uh, the other feature that they have from um, Thimble and that is that you the editor is always previewing for you and looking for errors in your code because if you're going to get into coding you know you're going to have errors so this is the end of a list okay and then it's going to start a new list here and whenever that slash li means we're at the end of this list and we're going to start a new list well guess what I, i'm going to delete that code there and the editor says hey wait a minute you're on at the end of this ordered list here because we had an ordered list that's ol here moving on to a new section and there's an error and what does the error say it says hey you have a closing ordered list tag here it doesn't pair with the opening list tag here this is likely due to a missing closing list tag here so we opened it up somewhere here and we didn't close it we closed that one we opened this one closed that one but but here at some point up in here we opened it right there okay and we didn't close that one so we need to but my point is that the editor recognized that there was an error and it gave me the hint that there was an error and what I should be looking for and as soon as I fixed the error did you notice the right side refreshed and um, you know it, it now displayed correctly how things should be so these are some pretty powerful features for for making beautiful web pages um, and and uh, you know exploring with code without messing things up and what you would do is you would save your projects you know that you're working on 
and there again they call them makes in the Mozilla world they're called makes so um, you know and then you would have your makes which you then can share we can give out links um, you can edit them make more copies of them so once I made one lesson for kids then I could remix that lesson so that little remix button on there and I can make a different lesson for kids go on to adventure four and then remix it again and you know do adventure five etc so that's the features of the Mozilla WebMaker tools that I wanted to share with you